In this question, we're told a constant force F acts on a particle P of mass 5 kilograms, causing its velocity to change from minus 2i plus j meters per second to 4i minus 7j meters per second in 2 seconds. In part A, we're asked to find in the form ai plus bj the acceleration of P. We can use the constant acceleration or SUVAT equations for this part. So writing it out, we're going to have now S, U, V, A and T. U is the initial velocity, V is the final velocity. I'm going to write these in column form. You can, of course, write them in terms of I and J. I prefer to work in column form. So we're going to have minus 2, 1, and then we're going to have 4, minus 7. I'll call the acceleration A, and we've got a time of 2 seconds. We know from our previous work, V is equal to U plus AT. So subbing these in, in column form, 4, minus 7, is equal now to minus 2, 1, plus now the acceleration times by time. So that's going to give me plus 2a. Subtracting now the initial velocity vector from both sides, we're going to have 6 minus 8 is equal to 2a. Dividing both sides by 2, we can see 3 minus 4 is equal to a. So I can say the acceleration now in i and j notation, or in terms of i and j, will be 3i minus 4j, and this is going to be meters per second squared. Now, we're not asked for it, but if we were asked for the magnitude, what we could say now is the magnitude, or the absolute value, is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus minus 4 squared, which is going to give us now uh, root of 25, which would be 5 meters per second squared. So that's what we end up with. That now is the magnitude of acceleration. Remember, the magnitude is given to be a scalar quantity. The vector itself, acceleration, has both magnitude and direction. So acceleration is a vector quantity. Okay, in part B, we need to show that the magnitude of F is 25 newtons and find to the nearest degree the acute angle between the line of action of F and the vector J. We're going to use Newton's second law. With Newton's second law, F is equal to MA. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So, subbing this in, force will be equal to the mass. The mass is going to be 5, and then the acceleration I found in column form is 3 minus 4. What we want to do is show the magnitude is 25. So all I'm going to say then is the magnitude of f, again, using Pythagoras, as we saw in the last video, is going to be 5 lots of the square root of 3 squared plus now minus 4 squared. So if we consider now, we're going to have the magnitude of f is going to be 5 lots of the square root of 25 so we can say now that this is going to be 5 times by 5, which is going to give us 25 newtons as required. So that is now the magnitude. Force is also a vector quantity, as we can see we've got both now, magnitude and direction. OK, we now need to find the uh, angle that this vector makes with the vector j. Let's just consider now the vector j, and we want the acute angle. So we're asked for the acute angle, and what I'm going to do is just look now at the vector j. From our first video, we saw that this was a unit vector in the direction of the y-axis. So what we're going to have is the following. So we're going to have something like so. This is going to have length 1, and we can put this on. Let's just grab that up. This has got length 1, and we will see hence why it's called a unit vector. And this will now be in the direction of the y-axis. So what we've got then is this is J. Now if we consider the line of action of this particular force, we can see that it's going right 3 and down 4. So what we've got is the following, and we can put this on like so. So that force is going to be doing something like this. So we're going to have now uh, right, so let's go right 3, so we're going to go right 3 and then down 4. In the same way, we would come back up here now, and we would be going left 3 and up 4. We're looking for the angle that this makes with the J vector. Now, we want the acute angle, so we can look at this angle right here. So consider now that this distance here is 3, 
and this one is 4, we can simply say that this angle, which we'll call theta, theta is going to be equal to the inverse tangent now of 3 over 4. So 3 over 4. We're simply now looking at this as a small right angle triangle. Remember, this now is our force F. F is acting now in this direction. We're coming through here. I've drawn this relative now to the origin. You certainly don't have to, but I wanted to give some idea now of this vector J. So let's go ahead and work this out. So what we'll do in a calculator, making sure we're in degrees mode, the inverse tan of 0.75, which is 3 quarters. That gives me now 36.86 and so on. So 36.86 dot 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 and so on. We need it to the nearest degree. So it's going to be 37 degrees. So that's the angle that it makes with the vector i. This is one way of showing it. Certainly not exclusive, but it's one way to understand what we're actually looking for. This is now the line of action. We're coming through this way. The magnitude is going to be now greater, but the actual direction is just some scalar multiple. In this case, five lots of this now uh, direction vector, which is going to be 3i minus 4j. So this is one way of showing it. And of course, in terms of your notation here, you can go back to the i and j notation rather than using column form. So a quick question looking at using vectors when we're dealing with forces.